let's just remain in an attitude of prayer. You know, for many of us, we've broken our fast this, this morning, and many of us are thankful for that. And you know, the focus for this week was not what we lost, but what we gained. And I pray that God met your request as you personally fasted for yourself and for the church. And so let's just open our hearts to God. Lord, thank you that we can draw near in faith this morning, Lord, trusting that we come before a living and a loving God. And Lord, today, a significant day in the life of our church. Lord, we are praying. Lord, we sense your spirit. Lord, we pray that you're going to speak to each and every single one of us. And so, Lord, we we stand ready, open-hearted, open-minded to what you want to say to us this morning. And Jesus, we do. We give ourselves to you. We commit everything of who we are to you. Why? Because you gave you all for us. And we give ourselves in return. And so, Jesus, we glorify you. We thank you for your life. We thank you for the cross, Lord. And we remember you and your sacrifice and your grace that still flows today. We worship you in Jesus' name. The church then. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Well, welcome to Vision Sunday. Give someone the biggest smile, your wife or husband, the biggest kiss you've ever given them. No, you can do better. Come on. Well, what more do we need than to, uh, oh, there we go. What more do we need than early in the morning to, to worship God and to wake ourselves through song? Don't you find it stirs you? And, uh, you know, I always think of David in the psalm. He says that God inhabits the praises of His people. That as we worship, we can be confident that God is with us right here by His Spirit. And we need faith to believe that and even sense that. And so, as we said, Vision Sunday, so glad, so thankful that you've actually decided to join us this morning. And so, a warm welcome to everybody. Just as Pastor Angie said, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you here. More so any first-time guest that might be here with yeah. us. A very special Sunday, I might add, that you guys were able to make it here. And we really do hope that you'd make this a home, you'd find Journey Church warm welcoming yeah. and can we please give any first time guests a warm welcome there we go um, at the end of the service please do make sure you grab a guest pack inside you'll hear more information about who we are our values and our visions as journey church thank you Sloni. and so it's not only vision sunday it's our birthday and we are a church that celebrates and we find every reason to celebrate, to be generous, to do what we can, because that's the nature of God. And so we are going to sing this morning. So it is our third birthday. And some of you, but I've been in the church longer than th three years. Well, for those of you who don't know, the church was actually planted in February 2012. And we were always a campus, a part of One Way Church, Funnabell Park for many years. And then it was January the 29th, 2019, that we relaunched as Journey Church. And so just this week, we celebrated our third birthday as journey and so who's ready to sing come let's get on our feet let's celebrate let's sing happy birthday to journey church knowing that journey church is me and you so Chloni has got the voice so much better than me he's gonna lead you in song this morning off you go sir happy. one two Three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Journey. Happy birthday to you. Yep, yep. And another one. And a third one. There we go. So we've actually got some beautiful birthday wishes that came in from you, the church. And so let's turn our attention to the screens and watch this. You can take your seats. Happy third birthday, Jenny Church. For me, Jenny Church has been a wonderful home. And I pray that God will take us from strength to strength. Hooray! Happy third birthday, Journey Church. Ever since I joined the church and started to serve, my journey to getting to know God was has been more fulfilling. 
And it's actually a lot easier because I'm surrounded by people who feel the same way and love God the same way. Happy birthday, Journey Church. Thank you for being the most awesome church home for the past three years. Um, for me, church is a um, central hope for a community where people share the same passion and love for Jesus come together to learn, to grow, and to serve each other in serving the community. And this is my church. Thank you. Happy birthday, Journey Church. Journey Church, you have been one of my uncountable blessings in my life. You have been my safe space, a place that I call home, where I get to grow, where I get to share without fear of being judged. I cannot wait to see what God has in store for us this year. Happy, happy, happy birthday, Journey Church. What a three years we had, rock up and down. Uh, how did we think this year was going? And it went fast, eh? But I think what happened is we all learned as a Journey Church family, learn a lot, we grew a lot. And I want to say thank you for the church, church family to help me also growing into where I am now. Still a lot of growing to do, but I'm sure with the help of, with each other, we're going to take the next three years forward. Happy third birthday, Journey Church. What a great privilege and joy it is to be part of a family like Journey Church that is life-giving, soul-refreshing, and just full of love and care. Happy, Happy third, third birthday, birthday Journey, Journey Church. Church. We are so excited to be celebrating your third birthday with you. To me, Journey Church is family, a place where we belong. It has definitely strengthened our marriage and helped us to face life's challenges in a more efficient way. Happy birthday, Journey Church. So this is a place where I found myself when I had lost myself. I also learned to serve God through serving others humbly. And I pray that we will continue to grow so that others may find themselves in God. Cheers to many more years. Happy birthday, Journey Church. Your slogan says, welcome home. And we feel right at home. Hey, hey, happy birthday. Happy Birthday! Journey Church! Woo! Can you believe it? Three years and we love the journey with you. We love you, Journey Church. The best is yet to come. Yes, to many more. Well, can you see that church is family? Church is more than a Sunday. And so a special thank you to everyone that was brave enough to send us a video this week, and again, I just want to mention how fast I was blown away by the feedback that we got this week from how many people were actually fasting. In the, in the past, we've had fasts, and we were never really sure as to how many people were fasting, but the true test is last week, Tuesday or Wednesday, we had a volunteers team meeting, and we had to cater for every person because we didn't know who was fasting and who was not, and so we catered for 45 people, and uh, there was a lot of food left over, and so people were just awkwardly standing by looking at everyone who was eating, like, jealous not and there was leftover coffee and so and I heard people and people sent us some emails about what they felt God was saying to them and to the church and so thank you thank you thank you and it just shows us that you're invested and so that really means a lot to us and so uh, there's no secret that cuts out the bag our vision for 2022 is not just more immeasurably more immeasurably more. And so we've been saying this for so long. We've really had a build up from the beginning of January. We started with a series about consecrated. How do we set ourselves apart for God? Then we spoke about how we need to ask, seek, and knock God through prayer and through many other ways, um, really being hungry for what God has. And so we, we really are believing that this year is going to be a year where you and I unashamedly ask God for more. You need to know that you need not be shy. This year, together, if you feel like, am I alone? No, you're not. We're all coming forward with confidence before God in heaven. And we're going to ask God for more because we can and because he wants us to. Okay? But also, it's going to be a year of God asking more from us. So we can't live in a take-take relationship with God. There's got to be the balance where God is generous and he gives, but that we also come back and meet God with our very own lives and say, Lord, as much as what you bless and give me, it doesn't stop with me. I'm a channel and God, you can have more of me. And I honestly believe the greater blessing of this year is you and I giving ourselves more, not you and I getting more from God. And so we really are set up for a fantastic year. 
And so we really need to, as I've been saying, we need to find the balance, each one of us, between what are the spiritual blessings we're going to ask God for and what are the physical blessings we're going to ask God for. Because I think you and I, we almost, we, we tend to just ask God for the physical and Lord, I want this thing and this and I need that, I need the job, I need the new house, I need this, whatever it may be, and that's fine. We must ask God for those things. But why not ask God for spiritual gifts as well? Um, about maybe fellowship and grace and the ability to forgive and to be generous in thought, word, and deed, and that the nature of God would fill us more and more and more. So it's not just a physical blessings focus. It is also God bless me spiritually so that I can bless others as well. And so the purpose of our vision is to receive blessings from the hand of God, but also for allowing God's hand to shape us. So, so God will open his hand and he will bless us, but then again, on the other hand, he's going to take his hand and he's going to mold and shape us because we are supposed to submit ourselves as clay in the potter's hands where we say, Lord, build what you want, do what you want. My life is not my own. It is, in fact, yours. And so you may ask, how did we get to this vision of immeasurably more? And you know that we've been saying it, and I said it earlier, that church, we have to understand that church is more than a Sunday. Jesus did not die so that you and I can gather on a Sunday, full stop, and that's it. Church is more than a Sunday, church is more than my sermon or any other sermon, and church is definitely more than three songs on a Sunday. Church has to be more. And I was so challenged on this thought. There was a man by the name of Sebastian Furler, and I believe he is a pastor, um, speaking about church and Sunday services and how we engage as a community. He asked this question recently, and it struck me. He said, he said this, try explaining church without describing the Sunday service. So here's, here's how we would break that down. Imagine you and I as a faith community had no Sunday service. What would we be able to talk about about Journey Church? Would we have anything else other than our Sunday services? Would there be true fellowship, support, justice, etc. actually going on? Or do we really just focus on what happens on a Sunday? And so we're asking God, Lord, please help us to think immeasurably more than just a Sunday as a church community. And so this whole idea of church being more than a Sunday, more than a sermon, more than a song, just kept developing. And it eventually led us to Ephesians chapter 3. And so that's our, our verse that we're going to hold to this year. But I think it's important to explain the context of Ephesians 3. And so here in this chapter, Paul describes God's marvelous plan for the Gentiles or for the non-Jews. That would mean you and I. So we know God has had a chosen nation, Israel, that he had blessings and promises for through Abraham. And then it was only his select people. But God so kindly through Jesus Christ made a way that others could be a part of his family. And that is you and I. And aren't you grateful that being a non-Jew, Jesus says, you can still be a member. You can still be a part of my family. My blessings and promises can still be yours through Christ alone. And for that, you and I can be so, so grateful. And Ephesians 3 verse 6 says this. Speaking of this mystery, he says this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles, you and I, outsiders, non-Jews, are heirs together with Israel. Whatever God promised them, he's promised to us. Members together of one body and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. We can't have this promise outside of Christ Jesus. He is the only one that made, us, made a way for us to be a part of God's family. And so we thank him for that grace. And then Paul carries on to say this, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 19. He says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father. And you, you feel Paul's heart for the church of the knowledge that he has. Paul chose, God chose him as an apostle. He gave him this knowledge by revelation. And then he's trying to translate it to the church. And he's saying, I hope you can understand these riches. And he says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, I pray that out of his glorious riches, that's the God that we serve. He has glorious riches. That's his nature. Now, again, don't think just materially, financially. He's got spiritual blessings. He's gloriously rich. Out of his glorious riches, he may what? Strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure 
of all the fullness of God. Now, you've got to look at some of those words and he says that you may be strengthened in your inner being, that Christ may dwell in your hearts, that you may be, you and I may be rooted and established in love, that it would be our starting point and that we would be able to grasp. Grasp means you cannot comprehend what? How wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ for you and I. You and I should never doubt God's love. He loves us with a love that is immeasurable. We can't, it's, it surpasses knowledge how much God loves us. And so no matter how unworthy you feel, what people say about you, how people write you off, God says, you're worth it all. You're so worthy that I gave you my very own son, Jesus. And he closes that verse to say that, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Adam Clark on that verse said this, to be filled with God is a great thing. To be filled with the fullness of God is still greater. To be filled with all the fullness of God is greatest of all. And I think, again, that this, for this year, for you and I, that we would really, that our, our hunger would be to have more of God, not just more from God, but more of Him in us. And then, then we will find, church, that we will be most satisfied in life. Too often we, we take that lie thinking, the more I have, the happier I'll be. And God says, no, the more of me you have, the better off you will be. And so may God give us a hunger and a thirst for him and him alone. And then Paul in chapter 3 says this, and here's our verse, you would have seen it somewhere this morning, says this, now, now to him, he says now, now after considering this all, now to him who is able, listen, and willing to do, say it with me, immeasurably more, once more, how much? Immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. God saying, I dare you to dream. And he says, I can do more than what you can ever ask or imagine. He's telling us, I am a limitless God. You cannot confine me. You cannot put me in a, a box. I cannot just do what you as a human do. He says, I am God, the great I am, immeasurably more. According to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so when I think of this immeasurably more, I've said it probably last week that I can't shake the thought of, imagine uh, you and I at school or maybe at work still, we would use a ruler to measure things, right? And we know that on there, there there's units and generally it's a 30, centimeter, a 30 centimeter ruler or one or two meter, so on. And it's limited to what it can measure. And if there were to be a measuring tape that would be put to what God could do, it would just go on and on and there would be no numbers because it's immeasurable. It's saying this thing's just going to go round and round because God is limitless. He can do immeasurably more than what we ask or imagine. And so again, my prayer is that you and I would grasp this, that we wouldn't go, yeah, that's interesting, but that it would move from information to revelation, that we would go, wow, that the Spirit would open our eyes to that truth, that it would be something that sits in us, something that actually guides our relationship with God, that it would guide the way you and I live our lives, this all generous, amazing God. And as I said, you know, we only have access to this immeasurably more through who? Christ Jesus. If it were not for him, we would have no prayers to pray. There would be no savior to run to. There would be nothing for us. But because of Jesus, you and I can go confidently. Uh, and how do we do that? We said last week, we ask. And when we ask, we receive. And when we seek, we find. And when we knock, the door will be open. So God says, it's ready, but I'm waiting for you. This week in our journey course, we, we kicked off and we had a, a nice group and it was a fantastic start. And I remember saying to them, and it's something God helped me to understand years ago, is that I determine the strength of my relationship with God, not God. I do not determine, He does not determine the strength of my relationship with Him. I do. Because He has told us that I'm all in. I'm your God. I'm your Savior. I'm your friend. I'm your Father. I'm everything to you. I've given you everything. Will you please now invest into the relationship? And so you and I, I want you to think about how could you grow in your relationship with God this year? And ask, seek, and knock. And please don't be shy in your request. As I said, you and I need to come confidently. Why? Because when we pray, God can only say one of two things. He can either say yes or he can say no. It can't get worse. And so let's not be shy. If we think it's too bold, ask God and he'll only say sure. I'll honor your faith, or he'll say, no, not for now. And then we say, all right, thank you, God. I trust you for your answer. But we really can have a confidence. Listen to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. It says this. 
Paul says again, this chapter is so rich, and he says, in him and through faith in him, Jesus, we may approach God, listen, with freedom and with confidence. What is your posture when you come before God? Is it, oh, I hope he accepts me today, and we come crawling in afraid and scared of God? Or do we come with freedom, that I know who I am in God, that I am his son, that I am his daughter, that I am made his own, and that I can come before him in confidence. And I wanted to read you this in my my readings this morning. In uh, Hebrews chapter 12, it speaks about the old covenant and the new covenant. And it just describes the difference of how they approached God back then and how you and I under the New covenant with Jesus get to approach God. And it says this in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18. It says, for you have not come to what could be touched. Speaking about Mount Sinai, where God revealed himself to to Moses and he gave them the law. And the, the cloud came and the people were terrified. Listen, it says, for you have not come to what could be touched. To a blazing fire, to darkness, gloom, and a storm. To the blast of a trumpet and the sound of words. Those who heard it begged that not another word be spoken to them, the fear of God. For they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches this mountain, it must be stoned, God said to them. And then he says this, instead, now speaking about this this dispensation, this grace that we now live in. He says, instead, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to myriads of angels, a festive gathering, to the assembly of the firstborn, whose names have been written in heaven, to a judge who is God of all, to the spirits of righteous people made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood, which says better things than the blood of Abel. And what a difference that you and I can approach God, not in this scared kind of fear, but in a freedom and a confidence. Why? Because Jesus has made a way for me and for you. And so God wants us to draw near and ask him to meet all our needs. And remember James, what did James say? When he was um, speaking about when you and I ask for things and sometimes we don't get it because we've got the wrong motive. And then he says, how did he describe the character of God? He said that, you know, which of you earthly fathers, if your child asked them for something that you would give them the opposite? And you're saying, no, even though you are evil as, as parents, you know how to give good gifts to your children. He says, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask? And so think of the greatest gift that your earthly father or, or a mentor or a figure in your life gave you. And you thought, wow, how generous. God says, nothing. I can beat that. I am more generous, more gracious, more approachable than any earthly father. And you know, really how we view God determines how we draw near to God. And so I hope that your view of God, your understanding of God is that he loves you, that he's approachable, that he's not angry at you and ready to strike you. He loves you. And you and I can draw near in confidence. And I wanted to mention this, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, before I share some things regarding our vision for this year. Jesus speaking on prayer, he said this, therefore I tell you, now this is a truth. Jesus said, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. If we had to read it in the Greek, it would say the same thing. There's no science to this. It is Jesus said, if what? If you believe, if you believe that God would give you the things that you ask for, that we as a church are going to ask God for. He says, just believe it. Don't doubt. Don't be one that wavers in their unbelief, but just say My faith is fixed. I'm trusting. When it comes to pass, I don't know. We've got to have that faith of Abraham, don't we, church? Where where God gave him this promise to be the father of many nations. And he he turned 100 and he didn't have a kid yet. So how would he have a, a posterity without any children? And God fulfilled his promise. And you know, Abraham is credited for one thing in the scriptures, and that is for waiting. He just waited on God because he said, God is faithful and he will fulfill his promises. And so we just need to trust that as we ask and pray, then God would give us what we need. And so it's not that we're saying we're ungrateful for what we have. It's just that we now acknowledge that there could be more. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? You think God's blessed you to the maximum? He's like, no, I can do immeasurably more. And so I just want to then, knowing this, give some handles to the vision for 2022. And I love what George Barnard said. I mean, many people may question, but why a vision? 
And, you know, vision helps us again. We said last week, it gives us some GPS coordinates as to where we're going. We find ourselves in a new season, post-COVID, many new people in church, uh, things are growing, things are changing. And so we can't keep doing things the same way. And so God's leading us in a new direction and knowing at least where we're going, a vision would help us. Anyone try to drive to Cape Town and did it with their eyes closed? Yeah, didn't work, eh? And so we don't want to be a church that's, all right, where are we going, God? Um, we just say, no, we want to see where God wants to take us and let us get there. And so George Barna, I loved what he said in his book, The Power of Vision. He said, vision is not dreaming the impossible dream, but dreaming the most possible dream. I love that. It just brings balance that we're not going to like pray like ridiculous, out there, crazy kind of things that God would also think twice about. But it's the thing of what's achievable right now for us. And so it's not the impossible, but the possible. And so what is our commitment as a church? So we want to say as a church, as a leadership, there's things that we want to trust God more for and things that we're going to commit to. And so when it comes to finances, so let's consider this a bit of housekeeping because this is important for us as a church. Um, Number one, we had a board meeting, our management board meeting this week and spoke through a few things. And um, it's common practice amongst the churches in the AOG group that we form part of that every single church on whatever income they get, they tithe as a church. All right, so we ask you as congregants to tithe, to give God 10% of your income. And then in return, we say as a church, we tithe on what you get, what we get from you and from us as well. And so from day one, we have always given, this is actually a standard in our group of churches, that we give back 6% to the AOG group, which gets given to the the national leadership and it gets distributed to to leadership development, uh, goes to church planting, resourcing, those kinds of things. And so I'm so grateful that we're part of a tribe, that we've got a family of churches that is not just us alone. And so the challenge for us, and we've thought about it, but we have not yet solidified it, is to say, how can we give a further 4% of the income so that we can give 10% away as a church every single month? And so we are currently investigating some um, credible organizations. We don't want to just hand it out to anyone because we want to sow seed into good soil, all right, so that it actually be fruit and there would be a return. And so there are some organizations locally that we've identified that we're still going to investigate. And so, church, if you've got a suggestion, because this is our church, let us know. Bring it forward. We'll put it on the table. We'll consider if it's worth investing into. And then we're just going to be a church that wants to be generous. And you know, who knows? Maybe in the future we can give more than 10% away. So that's our commitment as a church. We want to do that when it comes to finances. When it comes to ministry, things that we can look forward to this year. With the theme, Immeasurably More. We are going to have focused preaching series on trusting God for immeasurably more. That it won't just be a sticker on a wall for us or something that we hear about every now and then or just on the 6th of Feb and then we don't hear about it again for the rest of the year. We're going to say, how do we have immeasurably more for family? And we're going to invest heavily into preaching and in investing into families and into parenting. We're going to trust God for in marriages. How do we have immeasurably more in our marriages? Do marriage courses, do marriage workshops and invest in that there. And listen, this requires a lot from us. It's not just something that happens. It's a lot of planning. We've got to identify leaders to carry the weight in this. And so we are trusting God for that. We're going to be having immeasurably more in the Bible. That this year, we're going to do a long series some way on focusing more on the Bible. How to understand it. How to read it. We'll go through probably another book of the Bible as we do every single year. And Something we're excited about is we're going to offer, we're busy working on it already, we started brainstorming, is a finances course because almost all of us earn an income and many of us don't know what to do with it then, right? And we've had so many conversations with people and they say, I don't understand investing, I don't know what a budget is, I don't know what a retirement is, and all I do is I spend what I get and that's not good stewardship. So we're saying, well, let's go back to scripture and let's say, how can we as a church learn better to handle what God has given us. And so we're going to talk budgeting, banking, savings, everything, practical things according to Scripture that will help you. All right, so that's exciting. We're obviously going to continue with our our two courses, the Journey course and the New Believers course that launched this week. As I said, marriage courses, we're going to have more prayer meetings. And you know, can I say this? We had our volunteers meeting last week, Tuesday. And at the end of the meeting, we broke up into, I think it was, nine groups of about five people. And we just spent, I said to them, I said, all right, no less than 10 minutes, no more than 15 minutes. And some of us were praying for like half an hour together. 
And it was just, I said to my, my, the group I was praying with, I said, my heart is so warm. Just because the highlight of the evening was us as a volunteer team just praying. And I know that needs to come through here into this room that we need to be praying more and more and more as a church. It's the one thing that Jesus emphasizes that the church should do. And then we're going to continue to invest into our leaders and into our volunteers. And the commitment I've made this year is to meet with all our team leaders once a month and with our volunteers once a quarter. And so just to do leadership development and focus growth with that. So some of, that's the, some of the ministry focus and, and all, with the, all with the purpose to strengthen our core. And so I've got a diagram that I want you to help plot yourself on. Every single one of us, every person in and outside of this room right now finds himself somewhere on this chart. And the chart would represent this. Where do we stand with God and his church? And the truth is we stand somewhere. And the truth is God wants us to journey forward anywhere but backwards. He wants us to go forward. He wants us to go upwards. And so what we find on the outside is the community. All right, That's the entire vol triangle. They don't even know that Journey Church exists. That's the community. Then we find the crowd. The crowd are those who come in a little bit closer. Maybe they visited church last year, Easter or Christmas, and they, they may consider coming to the church. Then moving a bit closer, we've got the congregation, who are those, those who are the regulars that would come every now and then on a Sunday. That might be you. But then further to that, we've got the committed, those who are here, and not just here, but those who are actually serving. And this is the model of God's church, that he is the head, we are the body, God has given every single one of us a gift, and scripture says that we need to use them well in serving one another. It's God's command that you and I serve. It's not a nice suggestion. You and I all have some value to add. And so that would represent the committed, and then obviously the core would be the leadership, who have truly handed themselves over to God 100%. They live and die for Jesus and his church, and they are willing to give up anything and do more for God. And God is saying, everyone should be going toward the center. And so the challenge for you is, where would you plot yourself? And what would you do to take your next step? And this step of going to the core just means closer to Jesus. Just journeying more and more with Jesus. And so I think it's helpful to sometimes see things like this and, and plot ourselves. And so one of the, the, the key focuses for us, we, we've spoken about it quite a lot now, as a leadership, is that in strengthening the core, we know we need to, and we've been wanting, and we've tried sometimes, we'll be honest, and it didn't always take off, is to launch small groups or connect groups in the church, that we would have more fellowship, and we, we tried, and then things happened, and unfortunately, people moved away, and then COVID struck, and then, listen, it's been a challenge, and so we want to be intentional with identifying connect group or small group leaders who would be willing to, once a week, or every second week, or maybe even once a month, just meet together with other believers so that you and I could be more unified, that it's not just a high and a buy on a Sunday, but that we would actually be a church family who knows each other's lives, who cares and supports and serves one another. And so on that note, Sunday the 27th of February, you're still awake? It's a lot of information. Sunday the 27th of February, we are having connect group leaders or small group leaders training. Now, don't be shy about like, Am I being proud if I show up and show myself as a leader? No. Uh, scripture says it's good thing, a good thing to aspire to leadership. So if you really feel that you, know, you would like to lead a small group, we're going to train you. We're going to help you. We're going to hold your hand. You're not going to be alone. And listen, it's not as daunting as what you think. But pray about it. Think about it. And maybe you want to join us after church Sunday the 27th of February. So that's some of our commitment. And again, I said for us to carry that may sound like a little, but it's a lot to actually put in place. And so... That's what we're going to do. You may ask, well, what can your commitment be to immeasurably more? And so here's a few things we would like to see a bit more of. Number one, salvations and baptisms. We have got to be at a church that cares about the lost. That it's not just us with an internal focus. And if I'm okay, that's okay. We've got to say, no, there's other people, the community, those on the fringes, that we actually care about helping them to come to know God and journey with them so that they would believe and follow through with baptisms, all right? And so again, let's be a church that invites. Let's say, well, is there a neighbor? Is there a friend? Is there a family member that I could just invite along and trust that God would bless them? 
right? The, the journey of discipleship. Let's commit to Sundays. Let's not just be infrequent once a month. The average American, they say, attends church once every three weeks. That was an old statistic. I don't know what it is right now. But let's be a church that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will be here every Sunday. Why? Because it matters and we want to invest. And so you can commit in that way. Then volunteers. We've currently got a volunteer team of 45 people. And you know what? Today in church, we're going to see at least 180 adults come through the service. And so 45 represents the minority of people who have put up their hands saying, I want to commit. I want to form a part of the core. I want to help add value and build strong. And so can I encourage you? Remember, this is not something I ask you for. This is something Jesus says. Lay your life down. Use the gifts that you have to serve God and his church. And there's something that you can do. You can add value. All right, leaders. We're hoping to see more leaders rise up in teams and in connect groups and perhaps eldership and preaching team. I I can't wait for the day when I'm not the only one that preaches in this church. You're like, yeah? I'm like, yeah. I can't wait. So, So that you would also have more grace and gifts that come and bless you that it's not just limited to me. And so maybe that's the journey you could go on to. And again, community, let's be a church that does life together. You know, we gave you a 10-minute challenge to come to church 10 minutes earlier than normal and to leave 10 minutes later than normal. Why? So that you can connect with someone. So that someone could bless you in a conversation or that you could bless someone else too. And then also, when it comes to giving, you and I can commit to giving more. You and I can give more, but also some of us just may need to give more consistently, that we may only honor God in the good months and forget about him in the bad months. He's worthy of it all, all the time. And so let's honor him and say, let's give, let's give more, let's give more consistently. And so on that note, we've got some tangible goals um, that we've identified. And normally we've had like these big things that we want to do as a church, but we thought, you know, the focus for this year is a little bit different, but we do want to add just two new things that you and I can commit to financially with our existing ongoing financial commitment. And so um, we we almost got some clarity this week on the piece of land that we've uh, put the deposit down on. You know that we've purchased one at a cost of one and a half million cash. We put down 500,000 deposit. We have the million cash to pay the outstanding amount. And then beyond that, you and I are gonna start building. Who's got bricks? Who knows how to mix cement? Okay, I don't think we're going to build a church. We're going to hire someone, but um, we're all going to add value somewhere. And so think about how you can in, in the future. And so prayerfully consider what you, know, you can commit to, to that. Secondly, something quite cool. Obviously, we're doing more catering, more hosting, more lots of things. And so we as a church, we don't have catering equipment. Can you believe it? And so we live on paper plates and all these things, or we hire from our church friends down the road. We're like, hey, can we have some plates and knives and forks? And we said, you know, I think it's time we buy our own. We're having meetings that are going on. We have a pie warming drawer. Who's looking forward to some good warm food on a Sunday? All right, you would have seen we purchased a new fridge. Now you can drink cold drinks. Everyone who ever bought anything on a Sunday said, thank you for the drink. Now we can say, here's a cold drink, (laughs) okay, because the fridge actually works. And so it's only because of generosity that we can actually pay for things like that. And so thank you. These things matter. These things really do matter. And so our catering equipment goal is a, about a 15,000 rand project. Um, and obviously that goes towards, as we said, also serving great warm food. So we're going to plan a bit very soon to do that. Because we're generous, we want to step in and we want to be a blessing. And so our beautiful LARPA, it's the monkey, uh, monkey jungle gym. They, they love to pull the grass and swing on things. And it's just been a mess. It's given us headache and water leaks and all this. And so we said, it's time that that thing come down and we're going to put up a nice new roof just to be the excellent church that we are. Can I tell you, it's so funny. We, we as a staff laugh all the time. People walk in here, it's like a supplier or someone dropping off something or someone who comes for a funeral. And they said, it looks so nice on the inside. We're like, we know. Because on the outside is not us. And we want to let us run through. And so we got a decent quote. Uh, again, please understand that when we get quotes, we, we do this extensively and we think about things. And so we got a quote in to do the roof at 62,000. Uh, it's a fair amount for that size. It's quite a large one. And the good news is someone has anonymously already donated 20,000 rand to the roof project, okay? So we don't have much to fill in, okay? And again, we're not asking you to meet the next 42,000 rand. Just give something and don't feel that, hey, someone else will give and then I must stop. No, because any surplus just goes towards the property. So let's just continue 
to be generous and generous. So on that note, anyone who wants to give toward that, you know that we have two giving references. They are for our normal tithes and offerings on a Sunday. That's what you and I give 10% of every month to God and His church. And it's the first thing I do within seconds of getting my salary is pay my tithe. So we do it, and we trust that you would do that too. So we mark that as tithes, and then anything that goes to uh, the, the, the catering equipment, the roof, the building, we mark as future. And so please, if you mark it as tithes, we're going to spend it on things for tithes, okay? But if you mark it as future, we're going to set it aside and spend only that money on future vision-oriented projects. And so please be sure to use the right reference when doing that. And so I've said lots, but we're going to close in something very special this morning. As I said earlier, Jesus builds his church and he is the head. And uh, we can find confidence in that. I love Psalm 127. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. And so what God is doing is not what we're doing. It's about what he is doing. And it's our partnership with him. And I'm so grateful for God, for the people, the leaders that he has brought to this house and to this body. And you should be praying for them, thanking God for them, not just me, the others that are included. And so we are actually going to appoint today a new elder in our church, as well as someone who has been recently added to our management board. And so our church, for those who don't know, is structured. We have two streams. We have the eldership board, who are the spiritual oversight of the church. And then we have the management board who help us with fiscal matters. Because if you give all the money to me and let me make every decision, I'm going to drop the ball somewhere. So we make ourselves accountable. People who have knowledge and experience with these things, they handle that things in, those things in consultation. So please believe that your money can be given in confidence. And so this morning, I'm going to invite up number one funnel to join us on stage, and then Barry and Jock. You can give them a hand as they come up. Thank you, sir. And so firstly, Funnel, my friend, uh, we've got a gift for Funnel. Funnel, I think, has been in the church longer than what I have. <laughs> no jokes. And uh, Funnel was actually, as we launched Journey Church, it was late 2018, we had the conversation, and Funnel joined us. He was the director of Journey Church, obviously as a nonprofit, and then also as an elder. And so he has been a great support to us. He's been a friend. We've journeyed together. We've had some interesting conversations, hard uh, pastoral conversations, decisions to make. And so he's been great in that. And so over the years, Funnel, with his work opportunities, things have shifted. And so he actually works away from home um, and is many times not present. And he, him and I just feel that maybe for this season, um, it, we're hoping that Funnel comes back in the future. But just with the work commitment at this stage, um, he can't commit 100% and rather feels it's best to let someone who's maybe more on the ground take over so that the church is in good hands. And so, Funnel, this is but a small gift, a small gift to, to thank you, to honor you for your years of service to us and to the church and to the flock. And so we really, really thank you. And so don't you want to give him a big, big hand? Thank you. And so you can stay with me. And so... With that, we are actually going to be welcoming Barry on. Barry as an elder, and Barry and I have walked a long journey. Um, interesting, Barry has told us that he, he from young, had a, a call to ministry and wanted to preach and things, and so has been committed to the church. Um, in many ways, helps us with the journey course, discipleship things. Uh, he's also just been a great support, trustworthy man, married to Dorothea, got two kids as well. And so he will be ordained as an elder today, and so we don't take these matters lightly, so we actually have a declaration that Barry's going to read before you as the church. And so let's give Barry a hand. Um, okay, I, Barry Keen, hereby commit to the following, to remain faithful to God by upholding the word of God as my standard for living, to remain faithful to the Assemblies of God group, by submitting to the authority in matters of doctrine, church practice, discipline, and policy, while actively and publicly supporting its vision, mission, strategy, core values, and appointed leaders. To remain faithful to the local church by performing my new responsibilities of excellence, while actively and publicly supporting the local church's vision, mission, strategies, core values, 
and appointed leaders. May God help me to honor my commitment. I make this declaration today and further agree to tender my resignation without causing any division or strife should I come to conflict with a group or local church leadership without the, the possibility of reconciliation and or am not able to honor this declaration. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me introduce Jock before he reads his declaration. And uh, Jock again, uh, a local boy. We've known each other, known of each other for many years. But obviously when they, him and Rochelle and the boys joined church a few years ago, um, very experienced with church and ministry and know how the wheel turns, if we can say it in that way. But has also come on not only just as a great asset to the church, but also a friend of Maria and I's. And uh, so even before having the title, um, Jock has been instrumental in helping us in the church, understanding financial things, um, truly a blessing. Um, Jock actually practices as an attorney, and so a very knowledgeable experience and something that our church needs. And so I'm so grateful again that God builds his church and that he brings the right people at the right time. And so Jock helps me spend the money right. <laughs> Look at that smirk, okay? But um, let's, let's hear from Jock as he reads his commitment as being added to our management board team. Uh, just up. Sorry, Jacques. Yeah. I, Jacques Lewitz, here I commit to the following. To remain faithful to God by upholding the word of God as my standard for living. To remain faithful to the Assemblies of God group by submitting to their authority in matters of doctrine, church, practice, discipline, and policy, while actively and publicly supporting his vision, mission, strategy, core values, and appointed leaders. To remain faithful to the local church by performing my new responsibilities with excellence, while actively and publicly supporting the local church's vision, mission, strategy, core values, and appointed leaders. May God help me to honor my commitment. I make this declaration today and further agree to tender my resignation without causing any division or strife should I come into conflict with a group or local church leadership without the possibility of reconciliation, or I'm not able to honor this declaration. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, George. And so, as I said, continue to pray for the leaders that lead us all. And so, I'm going to invite Maria, Zalna, and Rochelle, if you won't mind coming up. Um, we're not going to embarrass you. We just want to pray for them because we understand one thing's for sure. Ministry, we don't do in isolation. Ministry, we don't do alone. It's something we carry as, as couples. And so as much as what Funnel has helped lead, Zelna has helped lead. And as much as what Barry helps lead, his wife Dorothea, she'll be in our 10 a.m. service. We'll definitely be praying for her. And Rochelle also helps carry the weight. And so it's a supportive role. And so we thank God for these couples. And I just want to commit them and in prayer and then also ask Funnel to to please pray a blessing over Barry and Jock, if you don't mind. And so, Lord, we just want to, number one, thank you for Funnel. Thank you for his years of service. Thank you, Lord, that you've seen everything that he has invested into your church, Lord God. And I pray that you would reward him. I pray that your spirit would continue to lead him, guide him in the season that he finds himself. May he may, may not be disheartened by this new season, but may he look forward to what you have in the future for him. Thank you for Zelna's support. Bless her. Bless their three children, Neil, Lefa, and Lorato. Thank you for them. We're praying for grace to abound in their lives in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm so happy. Barry, Jug. God knew that today, this morning, you'll be standing here. You are a blessing to Jenny Church. And I know the church is going to serve God intentionally this year. And God is already opened the door. I want to say to church before I pray, whoever is sitting here this morning, hear the word of God and do according to the word of God. Together as a church, we'll reach whatever God has in store for us as a church. And as I'm going to pray, I want to challenge you. Don't only be a hearer, but be a doer. And being a doer, that's where you see God intervening in your life. 
Can the church stretch out our hands towards these two gentlemen? Father, this morning, in the wonderful name of Jesus, Lord, we don't have many words, but we are so grateful. We are so thankful, my God, that these two men came forward. They have heard your word that, Lord, you want to use them in this church. Father, I pray for Barry right now, where he's standing, Lord. You know his heart, how much he wants to save you in this church. And Father, you know his strengths. You know his weaknesses. You know whatever challenges he's facing in his personal life. But Lord, he took a step to invite you first in the ministry. I pray that you anoint him, my God, as he's going to serve this year, my God. I also pray for Jack and his family, my God. You brought him here in the right time, my God. You raised him in the right time, in the right place. Father, to guide and to lead our church and to help Pastor Andrew financially to make decisions, my God, to build your church. And Father, so that we can also give birth to the community in Firenache. We need somebody who's got your wisdom from above financially, my God. I pray for him to be bold, my God, to engage in big figures, my God, to approach mayors, to approach whoever, my God, who will help to open doors for us, Father. I pray for your boldness. I pray for your blessings. Father, bless these men as they are standing before the church this morning. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We give glory, we give honor, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. amen. Thank you, guys. You can grab your seats. Well, isn't that exciting? And so, thanks again to each and every single one of you. And so as we close today, I want us to stand to our feet. And what we're going to do is commit ourselves and our requests to God. And as a church, as we've said that this is a year of asking more, but also a year of giving more. Um, God may meet our needs, but can we also maybe not live in that take-take relationship with God? And, and number one, offer ourselves wholeheartedly and willingly to God in service in any way that He may lead us all. And so... Let's just open our hands and open our hearts to him. And so, Lord, I pray that as a church, we would have a Caleb and a Joshua kind of spirit, Lord. We know that as you sent the spies out into the promised land, 12 of them came back, two of them, Joshua and Caleb said, yes, we can take the promised land. Yet 10 of them said, no, we can't. The giants are there and they were unwilling to take you at your promise, Lord God, that you were going to give them a promised land and inheritance. And Lord, as we look at this vision for this year, Lord, may we be willing. May we have the spirit of Caleb and Joshua that says, yes, we can. We will trust God for immeasurably more. We will see immeasurably more. We're not going to shy back. We're not going to be unwilling. We're going to see you meet our personal needs, and we're going to see you take our church from strength to strength, we pray. Bless us, Lord, today we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And we said, amen. Amen.